hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making a simple garden trolley. Well, years ago, my father made this little garden trolley, and unfortunately, due to years of being exposed to the elements, it's seen better days. So I removed the hardware, and I was purging, and I was getting rid of it, and I looked at the hardware, and it's got these 10 and a half inch steel spoke wheels. And I looked into them, and they're kind of pricey, and I thought, why am I getting rid of these? Even though some of the hardware is missing and that sort of thing, I thought that we could salvage them. So on today's show, I thought, we're going to rebuild Dad's trolley, and I'm going to take you along for the ride. It all starts off, it's a very simple project, and it all starts off with some three-quarter inch thick pine. Well, I have the one piece cut and it is three quarters of an inch thick. It is seven and a half inches wide and 13 and a quarter inches long. And this will be the backboard of our trolley. And our side slots or slats will come out from this. So the pieces that you need for the slats to join onto this backer board are going to be three and a half inches long. So I'm gonna rip those and then we will cut them to length. Well, cutting the side slats is really nothing special. You want to set your miter fence to 11 degrees, and we're going to cut the top slats at 18 and 3 quarter inches long to the longest point. You will now cut for the bottom slat. You will reset your stock block and cut those to 18 inches long to their longest point. Both of them will have a 90 degree cut at one end, and then an 11 degree uh, miter at the other side. It's now time to make the front plate for our trolley and the first thing you want to do is cut your stock to length and for that you're going to want to cut that to 13 and a quarter inches. You then want to set the tilt of your blade to 11 degrees and rip one side of the board on the 13 and a quarter inch side so that it is beveled at 11 degrees. Once you get that cut, you want to set the ripping fence on your table saw for 7 and 9 30 seconds, turn the board around, and rip it again so that you end up with a parallelogram shape. Now, of course, if you don't have the ability or you don't want to mess around with setting your saw to 7 and 9 30 seconds, all you need to do is clamp your boards together, as you can see here, line up that front board, give a little tick mark underneath to show where you need to cut it, line it up and rip it through the table saw. Well, those are the main components that will be uh, needed in order to assemble the main body of our wagon. And the pieces here, our shorter pieces, will just go on the bottom. Then there will be a half inch gap just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to use a couple of spacers here and then your top slat will sit just like that and then of course our beveled board will then be glued into place in order to form the front of our wagon. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue this kind of crate together and we're going to glue it and I think what I'm going to do is just to hold it in place I'm going to shoot a couple of brad nails into it for now. And those are the lower slats glued in place to the back board. Now what we're going to do is use a half inch spacer and we're going to space the next slat and glue that in place as well. We'll just turn this around to get the last step in this process and that will be to glue in our front board, that one that we cut at the 11, uh, 11 degrees. So it's the same as doing the sides. Just get your half inch spacer here in between your, your slats and we're going to get this board glued 
and nailed into place. Now that our carcass is dry, we're going to be adding some shelf supports and that will be for the bottom or the base of our garden trolley. So I've just got some 15 inch long by three quarter by half inch pine strips here. I'm just going to add a bit of glue, line it up in place and we're going to use some one inch brad nails and shoot it into place. And we're going to repeat the same process on the other side. And now that we actually have something to put them on, we're going to add the bottom of our cart or our trolley. And all we need is some slats. You can choose your width. I might keep it uniform, keep it the same as the sides at the three and a half inches and we're just going to lay in enough slats to give ourselves a base in the bottom of this and I'm going to leave a half inch gap in, in between each one again just you know continuity around the uh, the garden trolley Well, if you've been following along at home, you should have something that looks like this. And now it's time to make the handles. Well, the layout for these handles for both of them will be exactly the same. And we have a piece of three quarter inch stock that is three and a half inches wide and it's 15 and a half inches long. And the first thing that we're going to do is at an inch and a half, we're going to place a line all the way along our stock and this will be the width of our handle which is an inch and a half at the top of the handle you want to take a measurement here that is going to be one and five eighths and we will mark that at the top of our handle and we will cross that with another mark at one and five eighths. And what that's gonna provide us with is the center of a three and a quarter inch circle. And that center, we will use a compass and at three and a quarter, we will draw a circle there. And that is the top feature of our handle. Now that center mark where you just drew that circle, you're going to want to center punch that because we're going to need to drill that a little later. And using a circle template, we're just going to soften the edge of this three and a quarter inch circle that we just drew just to have it blend in a little better. Now that we have that drawn out, what we need to do is cut this side here at a 45 degree and the rest of it we're going to head over to the scroll saw and cut it out well now that you have the shape of the handles cut all I've done is I've drilled a 1 8 inch through hole in both pieces, countersunk the outside, and on the inside I've drilled a 3 8 inch deep, inch and a quarter diameter uh, Forstner bit hole. And that will accept our piece of dowel. Our dowel is an inch and a quarter in diameter. It's 11 and 3 quarter inches long. And on the inside faces, it'll just get glued into place. And then once we're happy with its position, we will drill a pilot hole and use some number eight screws, probably about an inch to an inch and a quarter to secure it all together. So once we get our handles done, we can square them up on our, on our cart. At the back end, we're just gonna get a square 
line this up, make sure that everything is centered. And once we're centered and we're happy with the layout, we're going to mark where these are. We're going to drill some counter or some pilot holes and we're going to screw this in place from the inside. And that, my friends, is the woodworking portion of this build. So now what we need to do is I need to get the wheels on here. And as I think I mentioned earlier, the hardware, unfortunately, for these wheels has been missing. So for that, I'm going to fabricate a bracket. And what I'm going to use is some one inch square steel tubing. Well, in order to make the hardware to hold the axle for our wheels, uh, I've taken the one inch tubing, I've cut it into three inch lengths. And then all I've done is dead middle, in the center of it, I've drilled a 5 sixteenths inch diameter hole right through it. And then on the adjacent face, so at 90 degrees, I've rotated it. And at half an inch in from either end, I've drilled a quarter inch hole that will allow our number 10 screws to come through. But as well, then I flipped it 180 degrees, and at the exact same point, half an inch in in the middle, I've drilled a 7 16 hole, and this will allow for the head of the screw to get through the bracket. So I've got our makeshift brackets in place, and I'm using a piece of quarter inch rod as our axle. And all I'm going to do is I've set at my combination square at the measurement that I want my axle to be. Now, sometimes stuff happens and you don't get uh, a, the right measurements or the exact measurements on both pieces. And that is why I'm measuring from the axle and not from the piece of steel. So once you get it lined up and you're happy with it, you'll drive it home. So finish that for the other side and then our axle brackets will be in place. So now I've got the wheels in place and it's just a matter of taking a measurement of how long I want this threaded rod to be. And once I get it to the length I want, I'll cut it off and then our axle will be done. Well, I really didn't like the amount of flex in the axle, so I've added a couple of blocks. They're just a two inch by two inch blocks and I have drilled a quarter inch hole that will coincide with the height of the axle. It just helps to eliminate some of the flex. Now, the last thing that we need to install on here in order to complete our build will be the end stand bracket. And for that, we're just gonna line it up with center. I'm gonna use a couple of number eight by inch and a quarter screws. And again, we're just gonna drive it home. A garden trolley. Guys, this project sat in my backyard for many years and prior to that it sat in my dad's backyard. And I guess I never realized its significance or its importance to me until after both my dad was gone and then the project rotted out and I didn't have it anymore. So I'm glad to finally get this back and put it back on the patio where it belongs and have dad's cart exactly where it should be. Can you make this yourself? Sure you can. Do you need those wheels? No, you don't. If you want to, you can get a set of the wheels, and I'll put a link below if you want to spend the money and make this cart. That's great. But in this case, if you don't have it, what's wrong with making a wooden wheel? Almost like a medieval cart. Really, the only thing it holds is a potted plant. So there's really nothing to it that has to be special. It's not like you're wheeling it around the garden dumping dirt here and there. It's a decorative piece. So guys, I really hope you're going to try this one for yourself. Although it has a sentimental and a personal and a special meaning for me, that doesn't mean that you can't make one for yourself and start that kind of tradition of having the wagon on the patio. 
for your family, for them to carry on through the generations. Guys, I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed the project, and I hope you're going to join me again next week for yet another woodworking video.